All right, today we're gonna to be going over my favorite control break off of the entire MWT season, and that came on hotel offense. It was our fake A into a B hit, and uh, let's get right into it. It's a really fun one. Because they leave mid open. Because they double child A. Dude, yo, we did this like a long time ago. Do you remember we had like two guys go A, but then we like double hit at B? Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I got a, I got a streak, I got a streak. Let's, let's, let's get double, let's get double, let's get double. Okay, let's sack, let's sack. I'm helping you guys, I'm helping you guys. I'm needing spa, I'm needing spa. Needing spa. Yo, what's the main, what's the main, I think? I need spa. I have the, I, I have, I have the main push out, I have the main push out. I have the main push I have the main push out, I have the main push out. So I'm pulling up the VOD of when we did it versus Seattle all the way at the major five playoffs. This was our perfected version of the strat. We actually brought it out all the way back in, I believe, major two, and we still had Ender on the team. And that's when we sent uh, two guys A and two guys B. You know, it's the same as this strat here, but uh, a little bit different on how we played B side. Uh, on the B side, we would have Ender and Brandon, uh, one guy top bed, as you can see here, but also the other guy bottom bed rather than low halls. Uh, and he was just watching the bottom bed push through in case anyone that was towards B was gonna push through into low bed quickly to try and either full flank or stay at this white van and start uh, trying to spawn kill. So that was the plan for the older strap, but we figured let's switch up a little bit because low hauls can really set you up for an easy kill on this guy that might be pushing through, specifically what we were able to do with the indicator on point. So I'll show you what we did here. First, let's go towards the A side with the two subs. So the main break that teams would like to do towards the A side was sending the two subs through the connector to the hallway here to try and either break on through this side or that side of a site and trying to get control of the site pretty quickly to try and start hopping on it, getting some ticks. Uh, but what we wanted to do was uh, put a little bit of pressure on the defense to wonder where that second sub was. So we sent the other guy towards kitchen. You know, sometimes teams would send people kitchen, but this was more of a later hit to try and keep uh, their attention towards A for as long as possible while these two guys B would start working uh, towards B after these guys have already engaged. We'll play the round out here for the A side and then we'll go towards the B side. So as you can see for the A side, you have Ant working this connector, trying to see if he can get any picks. He actually gets shot by number three and number four, but is able to stay alive. He's able to finesse his life just a little bit more to buy a little bit more time uh, for this fake to keep uh, getting sold out because as long as they can keep trying to find him, this can allow Hook to activate on the other side of the kitchen and they can keep worrying about an, a possible A push. Cause you know, for hotel offense, it was either a full A hit or a full B hit. There was really not many times where teams would spread out like this and try and fake one site. So what we would do is try and debate them as much as possible and, and buy time here A side uh, so that this number two guy can now start pushing through or trying to help uh, his team through either middle map or through bottom bed. So. What you can see here is Kyler is waiting to activate on, on Ant. And once he does, he activates, gets this number one kill. And this was allowing Ant to stay alive this whole time. So he, he finessed his life. Kyler gets a kill. Kyler's now gonna be able to hop on point, but he dies and Ant can now get the trade on this guy. And while this is happening, the two guys B side can now try to activate on their end. So as you can see here, let's back it up a little bit towards the B side. This is how we were playing B. So we had Dan low halls. He was gonna be using an AR and just pretty much pre-aiming this doorway in case they busted out of the doorway. There's really a small chance that they would, but that's the only thing that he has to look at for the time being. So what Brandon's gonna be doing at top bed, he's just gonna be playing a corner watching this doorway in case number two, the lone person on the site would be pushing through the glass stairs into the top bed and possibly flanking uh, towards the cat. So he's just, covering our bases in that sense. So we're just covering all of the possible deep flank bases on the B side, but making sure that we just stay alive and show absolutely nothing to the enemy team. Because once these guys are activating here, we wanna make sure that they think it's an A push and have this last guy at the Godheady start activating and making a move uh, onto B. So as you can see here, we'll fast forward. And what Dan is doing here is he's looking at these doorways, but he's mainly paying attention to this indicator. So we can tell based on this indicator that whether it turns a different color, so it'd be red in game, uh, you'll see it turn teal here because of Seattle. So once it turns a different color, we know that this last guy is on 
uh, the point for 100% fact. And we know uh, at this point, after these kills go down, that there is only one guy left. Uh, technically, there could have been two guys here, but at that point, someone would already probably push through from L to, to mid if there was two guys because of the pressure that was going towards A. So we know the bait has been sold and we can focus on this last guy here at B and just wait for his indicator to pop up uh, to show that he's on the point. Dan, he's looking for this indicator. He sees it right now. As you can see, it turns teal. It turns a different color on the screen. So he knows 100% fact that this person is on point. They know the kills are going down and the shots are being fired, that there are three guys A for 100% fact too. So they know that they can now teamwork this guy on the B point, him and Brandon together. If we fast forward here, he busts open the door because he knows he's on the point gets the kill on Lamar, and now it's a free B take for us. We get the trophy down, and now him and Brandon can now throw their tacks towards main and towards spa and just play the point. This also gives us a free play with this spawner here, number seven, because he died towards A, but we have more bodies in this area towards the site. He's going to spawn low hall with us for 100% because there's no one on the Seattle team uh, towards this area of the map. We have more bodies, so we are going to spawn there in that low hall and get that free play and free reinforcement onto the hill for these two guys here left alive. Ants on a one-on-one -on, -one on the other side of the map. If he wins that, it's huge because he can now put pressure towards this A side and just be a nuisance on this side of the map as well. And what he does is he's actually gonna be able to win that. So Kyler is able to get on point two. We're now gonna be able to triple stack the point. As you see there, Brandon gets another kill with the nade and Seattle's on the complete back foot now. You know, the kills already went down. We're full stacking this point. They're gonna have to give this up because if they don't chalk it, and they try and hit this point and we get a three down, we can easily move over towards the A site and start capping that too. So they have to basically kind of cut their losses after these last two engagements. And this should be super easy for us to, you know, cross set up and hold. And as you can see here, number two and number four, both are fighting, number four goes down. Uh, number two is actually able to get number eight, uh, but we're able to trade that in. Kyler pulls out an AR, good job on him for this. And from this, we're able to cap the point, plus six lives on the clock. And as you see, Ant wins another gunfight here on the A site. So he's opening up that avenue for us to now start rotating towards the A site and getting pressure onto there. And this is the, the best part of the strat because not only are we getting B, we're gonna have the most opportunities to try and cap A as well uh, with a seamless transition because of his work that he's doing over here. So what he has to do is just basically stay alive for as long as possible and make sure that no one starts crossing uh, basically this line. Um, so what he can do is just play this cross, whether it's you know behind the satellite or inside bricks or inside white, he just wants to stay alive as long as possible and get any sort of cutoff kills that he can get for us to make our way and transition towards A. So as you can see here, one even chalks it completely because he knows that the cap is about to come in. And he actually, oh, unfortunately, he actually does get Ant slipping here. In general, Ant should probably just play a little bit safer there, just make sure that he's playing his one, uh, maybe prone on his belly somewhere, but uh, it, regardless, it is a perfect uh, opportunity for us to transition into the A site. So I just want to show this really cool strat out for you guys. It's a little fake, gets in the mind of the opponents, and it's a seamless cap onto the B site, which was you know pretty hard, especially if you had capped A already. But if you are capping B off the start and you get that with so much time left on the clock and so many lives to work with, it's so much easier to get that cap later on in the round because of how many lives that you're able to work with. So eventually, once you're going to be starting to try to cap A, let's say we don't cap a on this initial uh, transition over and let's say they get inside kitchen and they start setting up inside hill you know dubs white watching the pinch let's say they get into the setup with 27 lives we can start working you know team working kitchen or team working in the back with a lot of time and a lot of lives and a lot of resources uh, to do that. So obviously it's a lot easier when you have one point already capped. And by guaranteeing the B cap with this strat, it took a lot of weight on our shoulders when we were trying to motion towards A uh, later on in the round. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.